Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Brian Nano. And uh, we have a fast main track, the all weather Tepita surface this afternoon. You see both of those, Brian, on your screen right now. Looking pretty good, Ronnie, right? Uh, we've, we're, we're starting to get uh, several races under our belt. and. Played pretty fair, maybe a little bit off the pace a little bit, but uh, I think everybody's uh, been pretty impressed with the new surface. This is the most incredible stat so far that I've heard. 13 different trainers have won the thir 13 Tapita races there. So 13 different trainers, nobody, no trainer has won two on the Tapita yet, so that's how fair it's been playing. Got a couple of jockeys that had a couple of wins on, one being Miguel Vasquez, who had a good uh, day. We'll talk about him a little later on. So fast, the main track, Tapita is always going to be a fast. It's all weather. With that said, first race today, about five furlongs on the Tapita. These are maiden claiming Philly two-year-olds, $25,000 scratch, the six numeric. You got a ticket we want to show I us? do. I do. I do. A $24 early pick five ticket. You can see it's a little spready. Is that a word? A little spready <laughs> late. Tight early. 2-7. We'll talk about it here in race one in a second. 4-6 in the, in the second. The Logicals wandering west in God's promise. Mr. Louis Russell got a win yesterday. I think he's a good spot to get another one today. Here's the single. My best bet of the day. Beloved Warrior. First time in Saffy Joseph Jr.'s barn in the third. And then, as I mentioned, we spread in the fourth. Two, five, eight. Rubsa, the uh, five. Princess Teresca, the eight. JD's Vista, and then the real spread is in race five. And I love Ron when the you know the get out, the final leg is a spread race. I think we can go several different ways. My order three, six, eight, four. Mislo, a nice price for Terry Pompey. Hopefully, maybe that could spice it up because I do think it could be a little chalky early on. Maybe we get some value at the end of this sequence. You couldn't use the other horse in that race, huh? <laughs> well, we lost a lot. Uh, we knew that going in yesterday. I said, you know what? Uh, maybe if we get like a four to one, that'll play like a 10 or 12 to one in that sequence. Yeah. So a first race this afternoon, as I mentioned, going to be on the Tapita. And I'm going to start it off in here with the number seven horse without a view, who's a daughter, of course, traffic debuting for Mr. Mark Cassie. He's 22 percent with horses running on synthetic surface. Of course, the bulk of all of that success, I should say, is up in uh, Canada and maybe other places that have synthetic surfaces. It's a brand new game down here. He's been working well on Palm, up at Palm Meadows on their main track. Yeah, I mean, this horse is, won't have to be a, a freak to play with a group like this. Several works on display. You mentioned Mark. He's had such a good summer here with the two-year-olds as well. The only negative, I had 0 for 18 debuting in Maiden Claimers. But I, I use this horse um, as well. And if the money shows, uh, Vasquez is here. Had a very good day, as we'll talk about in a little bit yesterday. So a lot of reasons to like without a view. And you have the number two, super fine on top of your ticket, a daughter of Munnings. And a, a, one of the Munnings won on the Tapiti yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to show a replay of this one. It's actually this one's her debut where I thought she ran very well from a wide outside draw. Coming into your picture now, the 10 horse, she was basically wide the entire way, breaking from the 10 post. She's going to have to loop the field here. Uh, the winner, as you can see now, is loose and is it going to stop? But I thought she put in a pretty nice sustained extend, extended run. And that's a, that's a tough ask for a first time starter, especially from this wide draw. You know, it's not easy to make up ground uh, going this short on the turf course. And now she's going to cut back from two turns to one. She's got the experience. She's got the tightener in her. I think she's going to run a lot better. I think she'll be a lot closer today, too, with this much better draw. Super fine. I've got her on top. Like I said, I'm going to use the seven, certainly, without a view as well. Yeah, and that was his horse's debut. They stepped her up into maiden special weight competition in its last race. Didn't fare that well. I'm Total agreement with you on there. The, the, the third horse we both used was Wildcat Star. He's dropping to the 25 level today. After bumping at this uh, start, then showed, sort of showed some mid-race stalking speed, faded through the lane to finish fifth against uh, state bred runners for Jose Garofalo, of course. Uh, his big horse of all time was Wildcat Red, and this one being a daughter of Wildcat Red, owned by the same connections that uh, campaigned that horse. So we'll see the drop. Looks like it's going to be okay. Yeah, he was a cool horse, wasn't he, Wildcat yeah. Red? Boy, he's a warrior. Um, you know, we'll both have this horse third. So, you know, in the mix, I, I think she is a little cut below our top two. But if you're playing a B-level ticket, a backup kind of ticket, I wouldn't want to be without her for sure. Let's go to race two. We're on the fast main track, and it's a seven furlong sprint. And these are claimers three and up. Non-winners of two in life, 20 down to 16. And Brian Wentz and I, once again, oh, we had 
different winner in the first race. We flip-flopped here as far as the second choice goes. Wandering West is dropping to this uh, 20 condition claimer, working up a storm in preparation for the first start since breaking slowly. Never really got on track in that race against those hard-knocking group of 25 optional claimers, including that repeat winner, Pudding. Pudding didn't come back and win yesterday, but I thought he ran okay. And Louis Roussel had that winner that we both picked yesterday. That just the heat's just barn has just been going great. When you see bullet works in the morning, you know Louis got this horse uh, firing on old silver. Yeah, and Mr. Louis does such a good job spotting his stock, and that's why he's pushing 40 percent here uh, at the meet. And the blinkers go on here. A drop in class. It worked yesterday. It was a theoretical drop in class for his winner yesterday. This is a definite drop in class today. And I think Wandering West with Hiram Mio aboard. They're up to about 40 percent together after yesterday. I think there's a lot of reasons to like this horse. Ron, I think if you're on a budget in this early pick five and we start the early pick four here in race two, you could get away with singling this horse. You could do yeah. worse for sure. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but the horse in second, that you have in second, I have third. God's promise is cutting back to seven-eighths of a mile. Do throughout when the sh uh, went through the stretch come up and neck short. want to show you stat on Gustavo Delgado. Very under-the-radar guy most of the time, but he always has fantastic stats. Wow. So with this horse going from a sprint to root, all levels on the dirt, he is a 26 percent, six for 23, 65 percent in the money, 270 is the return investment over the past five years. So uh, I, I think this horse has a lot of upside today. Yeah, that's a big number, 270 yeah. ROI there. As you mentioned, the three route races, three one-turn miles, a testing trip mm -hmm. here at Gulfstream. He's drawn perfectly. He's got the foundation. That's why I used him along with Wandering West in that early pick five. And the other horse that we both had some interest in was the two boldness who's dropping to this level today and stretching out to seven furlongs. You have to hit in the board of one of two recent uh, starts at the 35 level for David Fox. Chantal continues to ride in good form, uh, named on this previous winner at the distance. And I, I, I don't know how, you know, we're just getting to know each other handicapping wise. And I, I just think that if you got a previous wins at seven furlongs, it's one of the things I look at. It's just that such weird in-between distance. I agree. It's a tough, tough distance. You have to run hard every step of the way. This horse got fried chasing the winner yeah. last time. The drop in class, I think, helps. Won't have to run as hard early stretching out. He could shake out as a controlling speed here, on, And if that's the case, he could get brave. Let's go to race three this afternoon. This one is about a mile and 70 yards on the torpedo. Maiden special weight two-year-olds. Let me flip the page here. And we have uh, two from Safi in here. No scratches or jockey changes. And we both went with the seven beloved warrior who goes to Safi's bond and debuts on the torpedo. Now I'm going to turn this over to you. You were up Saratoga yeah. all summer. Tell me about this race and this horse, basically. Yeah, I mean, Annapolis, uh, you know, is uh, one of the leading probably contenders for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, Turf and is going to run at Belmont Park today. Uh, an awesome debut winner for Todd Pletcher that day. This horse broke from the parking lot for, for Danny Gargan. Now goes to Safi. Edgar Zayas is here. Uh, Ronnie, th this horse might be, you know, one or two to five in here. There's, you know, not a lot in here to begin with. And he ran very, very well on debut. Danny Gargan, as, as high a percentage as he is, is not a debut guy, certainly not a first turf kind of guy. Uh, I think Beloved Warrior is going to be a real, real handful for the locals today going into a potent new barn. Yeah, and you know, that was on the end of turf. And as you mentioned, you race from post 10 on the end of turf. Not it's tough to win. It's like the seven and a half year when you break uh, from post 12 or something like that. Yeah, so Beloved Warrior there. The, you know, this horse that you singled was this? The yeah, same? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think he's the most likely likely winner on the card, my best bet of the day. I also used the number four Merlin, who's going to try to torpedo today after responding to his return to the uh, maiden claiming ranks and the turf debut with a set to pace second, going seven and a half on their firm course. They, they thought a lot of this horse, they were fooling around, jumping him up into, against winners, and I just think uh, it is a good spot for Merlin. Yeah, he's, he's a horse that's shown some ability, and he's also a horse that should be the controlling speed in here, especially on a little bit of a stretch out, especially with this form, the sprint form he showed. Uh, I would think uh, if, if Christian Toys gives an aggressive ride here, he clears on the engine. Does that work? I, I don't know, but uh, you know, you could do worse than being in front turning for home against this kind of group. 
And we, uh, we have the, the other sappy, we'll call it, in this race, and that's Granny Makes Sense, who's the son of Golden Sense, debuting for that barn with a series of sharp workouts up at Palmetto's. Got that bullet work in 46 and 4. I think the best of 63 runners at the distance. So this horse looks like it's uh, going to run well today, you would think. Yeah, a Ramsey homebred, as you mentioned, by Golden Sense out of an Empire Maker mare. So the distance is there. You know, if you're ever going to try to beat Safi, typically it is with first-time starters. He's, you know, still solid enough, 12%. But, boy, that bullet, it really stands out off the page, doesn't it, Ron? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good, good, good work there. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, the Rainbow Six today with this nine-race car will start in race number four. Four hundred thousand dollar jackpot guarantee pool. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. Ron and Brian is a little afternoon. Six furlongs made in claiming Phillies and Mares, three and up, 12-5. Just wanted to backtrack to the third race one second. That race is in honor of the leading trainer yes. at the meet, Sappy Joseph Jr. He's got two Cadillacs in that yeah. race. Did they plan it any better? We'll see how that plays <laughs> out in there. Now getting to race number four, six furlong sprint made in claiming Phillies and Mares, three and up. Kicks off the Rainbow Six. Got my usual number of 43.20. Any more, I would have had to borrow some money from Brian. <laughs> so I keep it, uh, well, you know, you, you, what I like about this number, Brian, it's just you get chances in every race, and you're not really going down and getting yourself in trouble with a $150 ticket. So three deep in here, and I think we were sort of in agreement in a couple of these horses in the fourth and fifth. I like J.D.'s Vista and Princess Tariska, along with, I think it's Sade Purse, or maybe it's Sade, like the singer, in race number four. The fifth race, I think it's going to go through Mislo. I think that's a good horse there with those scratches in there. Also used a Twilight and Simplify. You say, five horse field, why'd you win? We lose three. I'm not convinced any of anyone in that race could oh, win it. Sure. In race number six, uh, I think Diligent is the one to beat for Eddie Pleasey Jr., but I use Mr. Axel. Seventh uh, horse, the short turnaround is uh, number seven, Mr. Mac, uh, Mac McKay and Captain Cajun also used Neophyte. And in race number eight today, Here's where I thought it got formful for me. I used all quality in race eight and the number eight snow shower, the British bread, who's going to the Tapita today. And in the last race, I think Billy Yank might be the one to beat in there for Joe Orsino, but I also used congrats again. So $43.20 for me. I'm curious to see how you started this race off. 285 for me. I went with Rubsa. I mean, I had a couple stabs today. This was clearly one of them on the barn change. And, you know, I don't know a lot about this barn. It's a very small sample, Ron, but two for nine, first time into the barn. And this horse is going to be a price. Jose Morelos has, has impressed me in a limited sample of, of what I've seen uh, from him. And this horse comes out of some very key races, too. Um, I, I don't think there's a lot in here, and I think you're allowed to, to maybe throw something at the wall and, and hope it sticks. And this was the one spot today where I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to really blow it up and get creative. I put Rubsa on top. It's not a strong opinion, 15 to 1 on the morning line. I think that's a, the right number from Pete in here. I do think this horse will get forgotten about. Second Lasix, taking a shot, Ron, no doubt about it. Yeah, Juan Reverigo, uh, you know, he's only started a couple of horses, I, I think seven horses with a couple of wins. Yeah. So the bond now, horses seem to run well. And boy, he's a sharp dressed. He's always got a nice suit and tie on there, so if you see him out there, you'll you like that, right? Yeah, and so he's, I, I like that about it. So, but I like JD's Vista here, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to show you a couple of different reasons why. First, we're going to show the head on of the start. This was the 14 in this day, it was actually 12th 
post, but just stumbles at the start. And, you know, it just you know didn't have much to go. It was absolutely last, last after this. But I thought this horse closed well to, you know, for Pete Wozniak Jr. I mean, this is, I believe, the favorite in the race. It's not no great shakes. But, boy, if you watch that race early on, I didn't want to just show you this horse running and last. But I thought it was pretty good that this horse was able to close and be second that day. These are 12-5 maiden okay. claimers. You know, a horse like this, to run this well after trouble at the start, and then you see the stretch run here, I think it's a testament that he's got a little ability. We know these aren't the best horses on the grounds. To make a few different runs like that says uh, that was a pretty sharp effort. Listen, if I wasn't going off the wall here, J.D.'s Vista is yeah. clearly, clearly the horse to beat. Yeah, and much improved post. I mean, anything's more improved when you're yeah. out there. When you're post number 12, and you actually got the 14 number in there. Uh, then I used a, a horse in here. Do you have a little further? down, and that's the number five, Princess Tereska, who's going to Juan Riverigo's uh, barn there, too. He's got two in the race today, and shifts to the main track. First start since pressing the winner and finishing third. against 16 maidens going five on the turf. Uh, they keep the status quo. They got Carlos Lugo in the saddle. What do you do here? Do you, you know, uh, six of one, half a dozen the yeah. other, you know what I mean? At least I'm on the bigger price, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. But listen, again, the same sample. Two for seven into this new barn, Jose Verriego. Second blinkers. The layoff is a little worrisome. Uh, but this horse, if the, you know, that last race with the 44 buyer, a good number on the sheets as well. I mean, that's a that's a race that if if she can run back to it, going to put her squarely in the mix against a group like this. And the other horse I used on my ticket a little further down, we had the 10 and 4th with the 4, Sade, Sade Purse, Sade Pace. Purse is the daughter of Beauchois, debuting in, I think, just a good spot for a first-time starter to succeed. You know, uh, trainer Steve Dye, Victor LeBron at top. Just thought it was an interesting proposition. Maybe look, you're looking for a little bit of a price there 10 to 1 on the morning line. So our thought process was pretty much the same in here. If you're going to take a shot, maybe this is the type of race where you take it. And this race, named for the leading owner of the spring summer meet, Arendelle. Boy, they had a great meet. I think they had 17 winners of it, I do believe. Uh, uh, you know, so a great uh, great barn. They really put it together. And they, their horses fit perfectly here at in South Florida. Okay, so now we're going to go to race number five, which kicks off our final pick five of the afternoon. It's a mile allowance, optional claimer, Phillies and Mares, three and up, the optional claiming price, 25000 Got a hit by the scratch bird in here with the one, five, and seven out, so a five-horse field. And this is for our leading rider at the meet, Edgar Zayas. And Edgar is on the horse that we both have on top, so uh, you can see what we're thinking. I didn't actually yeah. do that for this reason. I know you didn't even know no. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, we're also not getting 12 to 1 with, no. the, with all these scratches, yeah. um, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, Mislow lightly raced, improving for a good barn in Terry Pompey. Edgar Zayas is the winning rider on this horse, two back. Gets back aboard today. You know, upside, Ron, in a race like this goes a long way. Certainly, mislow has got it. Yeah, you know, you know, I called it the old bounce rebound. That yeah. you know was good. Two starts back, got, got bumped. You know, was fifth, but that was a really impressive winner. That horse, Penn Street. Mm -hmm. So I think coming out of a good race, that was my long shot of the day. But that is not <laughs> going to happen. Just do so. We're thinking alike, but uh, we got hit with uh, scratches in there. You know, I'll, I'll talk about the horse you have in third uh, and I have in second. And this is Twilight. We'll try the. Uh, a, a mile on the dirt today. Uh, uh, you know, for Louis Oliveras, if you've spent any time in South Florida, Louis, a long-time trainer down here, mostly over at Calder, race goes always with that lit cigar in his mouth. Uh, you know, Rally did the Peter... Uh, defeat, excuse me, a pair of next out winners going seven and a half on the turf. Miguel Vasquez seems to be in a zone. Maybe this one translate that. Now, this is not the Tapita, so maybe this one translate right. that to the uh, main track today. Hey, this horse is one for 14 on turf, one for two on the dirt here at Gulfstream <laughs> Park, so he's done it before. She's done it before. Comes in off a win, too, which I always like in these types of races. It's a good, solid, aggressive class rise. Now he runs her in a spot where she can't be claimed. Yeah, there's plenty of reason to like this or she could get overlooked a little bit too in this tight field now what about elusive molly yeah i mean definite player i mean i've got i've mm -hmm. certainly got her uh you look at the you know ben facing better um that last dirt run two back was you know kind of a toss out she was in way way over her head but let's look at the races three and four back right here at a mile, at seven furlongs with big numbers that are much better than this field. If she's still got it, I mean, I think she's the horse to beat. 
Yeah, so that is a pretty wide open affair. You know, of course, the race completely changed with the scratches and that race. And those were logical contenders, too. It wasn't like there were 320 to one shots in there. Uh, we'll uh, flip the page here and we will go to a race number six this afternoon. And uh, this one here, I'm, well, I might, have, might as well flip the page. I said I was going to do it and then I didn't do it is about a mile 70 yards on the tapita. Three-year-olds are four and up, non-winners of three in life, 20 down to 16, six in the field. And Brian, uh, let's hear about this number four, Koi. Yeah, I mean, a lot of versatility here. He can sprint, he can go short, he can go long, one turn, two turns. I think he's got very solid form, six to one on the morning line. You look at this group on paper, I don't think he's out of this at all. He might need a little pace help, I understand that, but it's a very small sample but these uh, Tapita races have been coming from mid-pack, maybe a little bit off the pace a little bit. I think he fits that profile. Certainly never been over a synthetic track. But again, we've talked about this the past two days. If you can handle the turf, you'd like to think you can handle the synthetic. I like this horse at a little bit of a price. Yeah, uh, we have one of our, Ed, in our office, they've been keeping uh, watch on this. And I think every horse except one it was previously on the turf or ran on the turf. A couple have come off, off track that they've used, but they were basically turf horses. So only one horse that had never been on the turf has won in those uh, 13 races. So uh, you try and see that there. And you make a great point because we've had only, I think, one front run front run winner, yeah. you know, and so uh, we'll see how that plays. And I did go with the horse you have in second. It's diligent, stretching out to the mile in 70 on this surface we're talking about. What I like about this horse sort of highlighted his versatility uh, on the turf when he won going around two turns, two starts back and was closing third against this level of competition going five furlongs last time out. So he looks like he can, uh, you know, run wherever, whatever pace, you know, might unfold. He could be part of it there for Eddie Pleasa Jr. has just been doing great and Edgar Zai is handling the surface switch today. Save all the ground from the inside. He's proven at this trip. Uh, got run off his feet in the wind two back. That's because they flew early. He won't be that far out of it. He's the horse that t today sits a perfect trip in here. Well, what about Mr. Axel? There's another one, of course. Well, you'll be hearing this a lot over the next few weeks, trying to tapita for the first time. Drew Clear defeated those condition claimers on the grass for Michelle Nye. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a bounce to him, doesn't he? Yeah. That's, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but the win last time was, was kind of from nowhere with a huge figure, much, much bigger than he's ever done. So I worry about regression from him. Hey, Ron, he's got a race over, uh, over a synthetic yeah, track. Right. It wasn't pretty. But he's been over it, if nothing <laughs> else. Um, and he certainly enters off a career best. If she can get him going again, um, yeah, he's, he's clearly the one to beat off that last race. And the number two horse, Long Beach Kid, who goes to the Juan C. Avila Barn after the claim, switches surfaces after holding on gamely. That was at a mile to defeat 20 claimers by a nose. Uh, they keep the status quo. They got Marcos Manessis in the irons. And, and once again, I'm looking at turf horses to see if they can translate to, to, to Peter. That's the angle I'm using right now. And I'm going to see, you know, if, once you get some statistics built up, maybe that changes. Yeah, I agree. And this horse might be the controlling speed in here. Now, as Ron mentioned, that necessarily hasn't been a great thing early on in the right. Tapita, but it's a small sample. You know, if he sets a uncontrol if he sets a loose lead in here, gets uncontested on the engine. Yeah. You can get brave. Yeah, you know, when you're dealing with only six horse field, you're right. If you get up there and get brave, it's not that they can't win on the front end. Right. It's just been the way the races have been playing out. Flipping the page once again, race seven, five and a half furlongs on the fast main track. Maiden claiming two-year-olds, $50,000, and we both went with the number seven in here, Mr. Mac McKay. A promising second in his six and a half furlong debut. Cuts back to five and a half today. Pressed the pace, he weakened, he finished up the track against similar, going a mile. Brian, was as simple as that was too long for this horse, you yeah, think? I think you said it perfectly, Ron. You look at that debut behind Golden Juan, who yeah. came back to win next out. Then Antonio stretches him out. He kind of gets a little uh, aggressive early, uh, a little hot and bothered early. He's dueling on the lead, predictably tires. Now he's back sprinting, back where the big race came third start of his career. You mentioned earlier the bounce back kind of angle. That's certainly it with Mr. Mac McHugh. I like him as well. Well, the number three horse in here, Captain Cajun, is the son of winner early sire Cajun Breeze, debuting for Mike Yates uh, with a slew of three furlong workouts showing. So you would think this horse would want to show some speed with those uh, three furlong drills in, and Mike had a really nice winner with full disclosure yesterday. Uh, so uh, th these horses run well for Mike. Who was also a Cajun Breeze, yes, right? right? Yeah. So yeah, Mike knows what to do with that. Uh, 
those Cajun breezes. Um, so if you're a little late, the stats I'm looking at, 16% with a 299 ROI uh, with debut winners. They are way up now because that winner yesterday was about $16 right. uh, for Mike. Very, very sharp. Um, he knows what to do with these type of horses. Plenty of works on display. Don't sleep on Captain Cajun. And what about the number nine neophyte who's uh, shifting to the main track after recovered some trouble at the start last time out? Yeah, I think that's it. Trouble at the start and, it, you know, got a good experience at, uh, edge that day. Seven to one in 11 horse field. So they like this horse a little bit last time. Draws outside. There's nothing wrong with that attack post stretching out uh, just a half a furlong. I expect this horse to run very, very well. Ron Spatz having a really strong summer here at Gulfstream Park. And Miguel Vasquez in the saddle. So that is the number nine neophyte. Going to race number eight this afternoon, about mile and 70 yards on the tapita allowance optional claimer Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up the optional tag is 25 scratch the four scratch the number eight uh you went with the number five in here free data i think you have a video you want to show yeah i had to look at my notes here so you know free data maiden special weight winner now facing winners today for Tom Proctor and his longtime client, Glen Hill Farm. Down on the inside, the eight horse here. You know, I don't think this horse had a ton of trouble, but look at where she is now. Inside, it's got to go outside, and she's going kind of so fast here, she loses momentum. I'm not going to say she blows the turn, but she went wider than, you know, maybe they really wanted to. She's kind of got to regather herself a little bit. When she levels off in the lane, Ron, I thought it was a really, really strong effort, especially in deep stretch here. She's going to really, really explode. Now, she faces is winners today. She steps up in class. That can be a rude awakening for a young horse, but she's got a really big time pedigree. By Warfront out of the tap at Mayor Cassatt, who was seven for 14, a grade three winner, over $700,000 in the bank. And Tom has these horses, you know, he gets them going. They can still improve. I think she, she's my long shot play of the day at a square price in here. And listen, this is a very solid group, but we've also kind of seen what this group can and can't do. I don't think we've seen what free data can do yet. I think she improves and has a good chance in here at a nice number. And this has been the first summer in the ages that Tom has spent in South Florida, you know, just completely in South Florida. He usually goes up and uh, goes to Fair Hill yeah, and trains Maryland. his horse. Yeah, Maryland. So he's been down in all his horses. And boy, when I see Warfront, if this is a turf race, this would be my odds on picking here. I'm a big fan of Warfronts, but you make a great point, and that was a pretty nice performance. I did go with the number two, All Quality, who have in second, who won his only previous race on a synthetic yeah. surface. We haven't been able to say that a lot. Making uh, Moving to the Tapita today, surrendered that late lead when finishing second against 25 optional claimers, going a mile into 16th on the turf for Mr. Mark Cassie. Edwin Gonzalez handling the surface switch, so sort of a proven commodity. Yeah, Mark and Edwin, 36% together. That's a big, big number. ROI over three, and as you said, that, that really stands out. <laughs> one for one on a synthetic track, so that just gives this horse a huge edge over over the rest of this field. They are playing, well, I, you know, I guess they are playing her game, Ronnie, because yeah. you look, she's one for 17 lifetime. That means she's 0 for 16 and everything else she's done. <laughs> one for one on the, on the synthetic. That's she's a, a huge point. threat. Yeah. 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 And the number eight snow shower, the, the British bread is another moving to the uh, synthetic, the all weather track to Pita today. Return from the layup to finish here. This horse had a little bit of trouble in tight quarters behind all quality last time out. Patrick Biancone going to team up with Romero Mirage. It's sort of a rematch between those two. Second off the layoff, lightly raced and improving and that last race as you mentioned with some trouble too was a pretty sharp effort uh it's probably the type of effort that would win this one all quality you know wasn't far behind her either so i, I think snow shower if you're playing you know this rainbow six and and the like four hundred thousand dollars guaranteed in the pool you better use her too race number nine this afternoon a one mile maiden claimer three and up twelve thousand five hundred dollars is the tag and uh, uh going back i used two horses in my room of six but billy yank and congrats again i know you have a uh, interest in billy yank you had something to show us yeah we've got a replay to show a billy yank too and i thought he ran really big last time you're going to see him here out on the lead and and, and uh he's gets really pressured early there you see um Wildcat Texas, he's going to come into the picture a little bit. So he kind of, the winner gets all the best of it here. Billy Yank is getting pressured on the lead. He's got to run hard 
every step of the way. And for him to hold second in a much, much improved effort for Joe Orsino, uh, I, I think speaks to how he's going to go today. 46 and four for a horse like this. I mean, it's a $12,500 maiden claimer here. You know, they're not supposed to run that hard early and stick around late. He's doing all the dirty work. And I think today, Ron, he's not going to have to do, you know, work as hard up front. And I think that's going to be really problematic for the rest of these. If you want to single, if you're in a tough spot on a budget, you could single this horse as your anchor here. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I have him right on top, too. Uh, we have our exact a little bit flip-flopped. I went with congrats again. He's stretching out to the mile today. Uh, after responding to the surface switch last time out with a late closing second, it was similar quality going seven furlongs in the dirt for Mr. Mike Yates. And he does a lot of good work with the Jesus Rios, who's not a, a household name yeah. in here. But, you know, they, they get together. They went some races. 18 percent overall 17 percent right here at Gulfstream so you're right I mean these are you know he's not the necessarily the highest uh, percentage jockey we have here that's a huge number to be eight 17 percent with Mike Yates and what about the number six Chucky in here is changing barns going to the Jorge Delgado barn a return's gonna get Lasix today yeah I don't know if the Arendelle folks are, or John <laughs> Gruden fans or what but Lasix <laughs> comes on 25 percent first time in the Delgado barn that's a big stat Ron yeah Arendelle's had some of the greatest names for their horses of course Ian. Uh, you know, just all different names, uh, you know, uh, so we'll see how uh, that race plays out. That is the nine races on this really nice Sunday afternoon with a nice breeze this afternoon here. We're going to go right to the lightning round. You know, we were sort of uh, teasing this one. We wanted to talk about Mike Gates with those, uh, you know, the impressive how he does with Cajun breezes. Well, here's one of them, and this was a, a pretty good race in here, and full disclosure is the horse just won impressively. Yeah, I mean, he ran this horse, ran this field up their feet. Now, here's an odds on <laughs> Todd Pletcher, $875,000 son of into mischief rallying into the picture, so it's not like he beat up on Chris Green puffs either. Full disclosure, Mike Gates looks like he's got a really nice one on his hands. For Could have a fun winter with this horse. And, and talking about Todd's horse, that was a perfect learning lesson. That horse is going to jump right forward off that. But, you know, should supposed to at $875,000. <laughs> Otherwise, they are in big trouble. We had our first ever overnight handicap on Tapita. We'll call it our first stakes on Tapita. And one of our favorite horses, yeah. uh, Choose Joy, was able to win it. And she's just amazing. That, this was her third straight Handicap victory. Dirt, turf, and, and now Tapita. <laughs> she doesn't care. Bring her out to the parking lot, and she'll run there, too. And I think it's really fitting that she got, she's the one to win that first <laughs> Tapita stake. So she's been so cool, so good for the connections. Well, I say the connection because Steve <laughs> owns and trains her, correct? Yes, so, yeah, Steve Dwaskin. Yeah, yeah he, he, really he, impressive. He's had a great summer, Steve Dwaskin. He's had some horses. Usually, he, he, you know, he, he bats around, whatever, 10, 12. But he's had some great winners this summer. So congratulations to them. And then we got uh, Nick's go. This was our grade one Pegasus World Cup winner uh, doing it once again. We're going to show it yesterday, winning the grade three Lucy, Lucas Classic at Churchill Downs. This is, I, I think he's such a cool horse, Ron. He just has to, he's a horse that they have to run fast. Reminds me of Shackleford, right. who was good here right. back in the day. And he want the faster, the better for this horse. And he just bottoms out fields. He did it in the Whitney. He did it in the Lucas, Lucas, Lucas Classic. He might do it again in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's, I think he's got three grade one wins now, if I'm yeah. correct, you know, so he's just been going great. One of them, of course, being the Pegasus World Cup here uh, last year. So uh, then we talked about Miguel Vasquez, and he had a, a really good day yesterday. He had those three wins. He, he was aboard that victory in the Miami Shores. So uh, there you go. He's looking up at the sky for uh, three wins uh, for him. And he's just a, one of these riders. He doesn't get that all that play, even in the summertime, you know, but he's always right there. He's third. He had over 100 wins at the spring summer mate. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, we know how good Edgar Zayas is and, and Hire Mio as well, but he kind of gets, you know, lost lost in the shuffle a little bit. He's been a great partner with Choose Joy, and he just keeps on keeping on. Congratulations on a big day yesterday. Well, that's how we see the nine races. We're going to turn it over to Mr. Pete Aiello with all the changes you need, and we'll be back here throughout the afternoon.